Hey guys, what's up? Granted, a lot of you don't like emulation, you want to play all your video games legally. So what about all of those really rare and really expensive JRPGs on the original PlayStation? How the hell are you gonna play them? Well, fortunately, a lot of them have been released on other systems as well. And today I'll show you 10, 10 really crazy, stupidly expensive JRPGs on the PS1 that you can play in other systems. So let's begin! Number 10. Alondra Alondra is an action RPG that's mostly known for being one of the PS1 games published in North America by Working Designs. You know, all of those are very expensive and rare nowadays, so expect to see a bunch of them here. So, the Working Designs version usually sells for around 200 bucks nowadays, no less than 150. Curiously though, the PAL version, called Adventures of Alondra, is way cheaper than that. Japanese version is dirt cheap. But if you don't know Japanese and you don't want to overpay, not even for the PAL version, I have good news for you. Alondra is one of the many PS1 JRPGs that were re-released digitally on the PlayStation Store on PS3, PSP and PS Vita. So there you have it, three other consoles to play this game. Should you play it though? Yes, of course, I'm not going to include bad or mediocre RPGs in this list, don't worry. Number 9. Tactics Ogre This is a grid-based strategy RPG originally released on the Super Famicom. It's also the father of Final Fantasy Tactics and one of the most influential strategy RPGs of all time. It was later ported to the Saturn, but only in Japan. North America got the PS1 port, however, but ever since its release, it's always been expensive. Nowadays, you can't find it for a decent price, which is often around the $200 mark or more. Well, thankfully, this game got a remaster on the PSP, which is the definitive and best version to play. It's also on PAL territories, and while it isn't dirt cheap anywhere, it's not even 50 bucks, so there you go. And yes, you can play this version digitally as well on your PSP and PS Vita. Original PS1 port, though, has never been re-released and it's still exclusive to it. But I'm not sure why you'd want to play it, unless you want to satisfy your curiosity. If that's the case, you're stuck with the PS1 rare and expensive version, or you can always emulate if you don't mind. Number 8. Mega Man Legends 2 some people won't consider this game as an RPG, but I think you should be the one to decide that. I do, hence why it's here. It's been expensive and rare for as long as I can remember, because not too many copies were printed of it. There were Windows and PSP versions, but they remain exclusive to Japan. Europe and North America only got this limited PS1 release until very thankfully, it was published digitally on the PlayStation Store. So you can play this game on PS3, PSP and PS Vita. Remember though that the PSP store shut down last year, so in order to buy digital games for it, I think you need to purchase them on the PS3 or Vita. Do you need to play the first game to understand this one? Well, kind of, because it's a direct sequel to it, but you know the Mega Man games, right? Even though they're all connected, you can pretty much start with any of them. Plus, Legends 1 is on PS1 and 64, not too expensive yet, but I don't recommend that game. The, it isn't a bad game, just not as good as this one. Number 7. Lunar Silver Star Story Complete This game was originally released on the Sega CD, also published in North America by Working Designs. So it's crazy expensive as well over there. They say it's one of the best versions to play, but I disagree, I think it's unbalanced with some pacing issues and high encounter rate. The rebalanced version was definitely its port on the PS1. However, since it only came over here as a special edition, you can already imagine its current price in the market. 
We later saw a PC version and a Game Boy Advance reimagining, but not a single one of those versions was released in Europe. Well, in my opinion, the best version to play of this classic is its full remake on the PSP, a version that was fortunately released everywhere in both digital and physical formats. Yes, it's kinda pricey as well, but not as pricey as the PS1 release. Also, if you care about mobile gaming, I don't, there's an iOS version of it released worldwide, yet another way to play this game. Anyway, let's hope the sequel Eternal Blue gets some kind of modern release one day, cause it's only on Sega CD and PS1 outside Japan, both versions being crazy expensive, without any digital release whatsoever. Number 6. Persona 2 Eternal Punishment The second game in the Persona series we got. Now, it's widely known it's actually a sequel to another Persona 2 game called Innocent Sin. Yes, you kinda do need to play that game to fully understand this one, Innocent Sin's PS1 version is exclusive to Japan, even though it's fan translated. It was officially released on the PSP outside Japan, finally, but the physical version of it is crazy expensive too! Not as expensive as the PS1 version of Eternal Punishment, though. It's stupidly pricey, but it's also one of the PS1 Classics bunch. That means it's got a dirt, cheap, digital re-release on the PS3, PSP and PS Vita. It's not absolutely indispensable to play Innocent Sin first, so if you have no way to play that game, it's alright if you only play Eternal Punishment. I hope both games get some kind of remaster in a bundle together one day for modern consoles. Number 5. Ark the Lad Collection All four Ark the Lad games included in this Working the Science collection were released separately in Japan, only there, which means for a long time we were stuck with the expensive limited edition of them all in one single release. Europe never even got it. I don't know if there's a way for Europeans to play games like these, which are pretty much exclusive to Japan and North America, but I'm sure someone in the comments will let you know. If you're in North America and don't want to pay the outrageous price this collection goes for, you're in luck. Just like many of the games we've seen today, it's also there on the PS Store of PS3, PSP and PS Vita. And they're sold separately, that's right, you don't have to buy them all at once. You can buy the first two games separately, only for 6 bucks each, which are the only ones that are a must play in my opinion. This, like almost every single game in this video, could also use a new release for modern systems. Any kind of release. Number 4. Tales of Eternia so this was known as Tales of Destiny 2 outside of Japan, they changed the name here because Tales of Destiny was the very first Tales released in North America, so Namco wanted to let gamers know it was a game of the same series, but in reality, the game had always been called Tales of Eternia, cause there's a real Tales of Destiny 2, a direct sequel to the first one, that never came out of Japan. Anyway, the PS1 release of Eternia didn't come out in Europe and there's no digital version of it. But it was actually Europe, and also Australia, that got its port on the PSP. It's not that expensive yet if you want a physical copy of it, cause the PS1 version is beyond ridiculous in price. Digital versions exist in those territories but not in North America. Thankfully though, the PSP is region free, so you can buy any physical version of it and play it on your North American PSP. Is it the same version as the PS1 or is it a remake? No, it's merely an enhanced port with better resolution, interface and less loading times. Do you need to play Tales of Destiny 1 first? No, the games are not connected, different story, characters and even universe. Number 3. Vanguard Bandits Vanguard Bandits is one of the most obscure but also one of the best strategy RPGs on the PS1, localized by working design, so yeah, it's very rare and expensive. Unfortunately, it was never released anywhere else but Japan and North America, 
Its real name in Japan, however, is Epica Stella, and a physical version of it can be found for around 40 bucks. Digital versions exist for both regions, though. Yup, another game you can buy for 10 bucks at the PS Store in PS3, PSP, and PS Vita. Yes, this game is totally worth it, it's excellent. All RPGs in this list are personal recommendations of mine, but I want to make this one stand out because it's the most unknown of them all. I've covered it several times in several videos before. You control a plethora of characters fighting in different mech knights, but the appeal here is that the game has several routes and endings, so obviously different routes will have different characters and so on. If you own any of those systems and you like strategy RPGs, do yourself a favor and play Vanguard Bandits. Number 2. Valkyrie Profile This is probably one of the most popular games in the list in terms of rarity. It was also a victim of a limited print run, so there weren't a lot of copies since its localization. It's stupid considering the Japanese counterpart is dirt cheap. The localization though had some gameplay improvements but some censorship issues. Europe once again didn't get this one, not until its release on the PSP of course. The PSP version includes some cool full motion video cinematics that replace the animated ones in the original, but this PSP port is based on the Japanese version with no changes to the gameplay and no censorship. So which is the best version to play? I'm not sure since both are excellent only with a few small ups and downs. What I do know is that the PSP version can be found at a reasonable price in Europe and North America, so I'm guessing that's the version most of you will go for, and a must go for, as this is a highly recommended masterpiece. Oh yeah, it received another port a few years ago with enhanced graphics for iOS and Android. Yeah. Well, at least there's two more ways to play it other than on the super expensive PS1 release. Number 1. Suikoden 1 and 2 Suikoden 1 is not that rare and expensive yet, but it's pricey nonetheless, so maybe the real star here is Suikoden 2, another game with a limited print run. Less copies of this one exist out there than Valkyrie Profile. Forever this game has been crazy expensive, and now the first one is slowly starting to get up there as well. Both received a simple port with small improvements on the PSP, but you already know where that version was released. Same with the PC versions and the Sega Saturn version of Suikoden 1. But did you know they are also among the many PS1 classic games released on the PS Store? Well, if you didn't, now you do. I think they are sold at 10 bucks each on the PS3 and PS Vita. They were also on the PSP before the store shut down, but only the PS1 versions, as the PSP ports have never been localized in any form whatsoever. You know very well why I put these two games on the first place of this list, so go and play them in any way you can, because it's almost a guarantee Konami will never bring them back to modern systems. I really hope they prove me wrong one day. I have a bunch of honorable mentions here, they aren't that expensive yet, but they're starting to get there. Yeah, so they're also on the PlayStation Store, you know, PS3, PSP, and PS Vita. And one of them is Breath of Fire 4. The other one is The Legend of Dragoon. Another one is Xenogears. And there's also this really rare, obscure game called Sayuki Journey West. The list could go on, but that's it for today. So those are my picks for today's video, I hope you enjoyed this, thanks for watching, don't forget to subscribe and share this video with your friends. See you next time!